welcome to another 3 Avian Today cooking program. We are the Mitchell, Mitchell Sisters. Sisters. I am Linda. I'm Brenda. And I'm Cinda. And our theme for today's program is Rise, Rise and Shine. shine. <laughs> That's right. We are inviting you to breakfast. And we have quite a, a few breakfast ideas for you, don't we, sisters? And there's a lot of people that honestly don't know what to have for breakfast because a lot of I mean most of them are in a hurry and they're just like oh just grab something and or we're nothing gonna, you we're, know? Gonna, we're gonna help you out today <laughs> because it, breakfast is the most important meal of the day our parents told us that since I can re remember and I think there's been enough studies done about it to help you realize that you really do need a, a wonderful, nutritious breakfast right. to, to, to get yourself going. It's like uh, trying to drive a car and no gas, you know, so you have to fuel up and you have to fuel up with good nutrition. Well, but one thing that does help also mm -hmm. to have um, good um, nutrition and to be really, really hungry in the morning is eat very lightly at night. So that when you get up, you are ready to go and you want to eat breakfast. But if you eat too much at night, then you're sluggish and you wake up and you just don't want to eat. So try that. That's eat a good idea, sis. <laughs> I think I always want to eat. <laughs> Well, we'd like to uh, sh uh, show you right now some of the things that we are going to prepare today. We're going to start off with raisin bread pudding. Mm. And it's a, a good bread pudding. I think you're going to enjoy it. And then we're going to have Grammy's granola. Ooh, Ooh. Love I love your granola. Oh, sunrise burritos. <laughs> That's a rise and shine <laughs> recipe. And apricot pecan bread. Such a nice, moist, gooey bread. I love it. And we're going to have homemade biscuits and gravy. Ooh. Now, it doesn't get better than biscuits and gravy in my book. And then apple cinnamon baked oatmeal. Oh, that looks good, too. And that's a new twist on oatmeal, that's isn't it? That's a new twist, it? and that's well, good for those who are in a hurry in the morning. That's true, because you could probably make it you the could, day before. You could make it. That's what you do. You make it the <laughs> night before, and you just pop it in the oven, and it's ready. That's really good. Well, we're going to start off with raisin bread pudding. Let me read the recipe for you. For this, you will need one 16-ounce package of silken tofu, one cup of soy milk, three-fourths cup of silk creamer, three teaspoons of cinnamon, three-fourths teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of vanilla, two tablespoons of cornstarch, two tablespoons of canola oil, four cups of whole wheat, French bread cut into one inch cubes and one half cup of raisins. Now that's not a lot of ingredients, is it? Mm -hmm. um, but I really love bread pudding. And I've taken, uh, this recipe is actually in our new cookbook, Family Favorites. But I've added something on this recipe today. I've added just a little bit of frosting. You don't have to add it if you don't want to and you want to decrease the sugar, but I love a little frosting on it. So I just made up a homemade uh, vanilla, one of, we grew up with, our mom taught us how to make it, and threw that on there. And you can use any frosting of your choice if you want, or not at all. So let's get started. For this, okay. we have to use this noisy old blender. Sorry about that, <laughs> folks. But this is a recipe that is, is one of the reasons it's re so easy, is it? all just goes in the blender. Everything but the bread and the raisins go in the blender. So sis, all would right. you start that please? I will open this for you. This is the silken um, uh, tofu. And if you don't have silken tofu, you could use a, a mori new tofu as well. It just needs to be soft and and uh, you want it to be smooth. Because creamy. the other tofu is kind of grainy and, and it works best for um, like a, a, scra a, a mock scrambled egg or something like that. I'm gonna put that in there. There you go. That's true. So, I, this this reminds me of when um, we were taping uh, Kids Time cooking segment on on Kids Time. Cinda's daughter Katie hosts that uh, cooking time segment, and she was putting. <laughs> we were in the middle of taping, and she's putting the the tofu just like that in the blender, and it she missed the blender, the front, and the tofu went outside the blender. <laughs> And that is and the, the tofu, very... The tofu went everywhere in poor Katie's little face. She just went like, oh! And then she burst into laughter. And that is the reason why I was so careful putting it in. It's actually made our blooper page. And I think if you go to our Kids Time website, uh, kidstimeforjesus.org, click on the bloopers and you, I think it's on there. It's so funny. 
<laughs> well, and you know, when she was uh, cooking when she was younger, you know, she was learning as she went. And Cinda, of course, was her was her coach. You know, constantly right. sharing, just like our mom shared with us. And now Katie is amazing at oh, cooking. Oh, she's an amazing cook. She, she really loves is. it and has a lot of people over and she cooks for them and it it's something. It really is. She's, she's her food is delicious. Mm -hmm. She definitely can cook. Yeah. David and can cook too. One of my favorite things that Katie cooks is Thai food. I love Thai food anyway. It's a, a That's cuz she are both of them in. They were I mean, Yep, just throw it all in. All right. I'll do it. All right, all right. folks. Here we go. All right, plug your ears. Get Here ready. we go. Cloud zone. Well, That's I think we're enough. almost done. It didn't get a little bit there. That's not going to hurt a thing. All right. Me. It's not going to be a problem. I wonder what we all did without blenders. <laughs> uh, blender, well, I can you tell you what we did without please? blenders. <laughs> we're just going <laughs> to... We're going to um, spray this with the nonstick cooking spray. And I just wanted to give you a little tip on the breadcrumbs. You see how we have four cups? This is probably a little bit... Um, Generous four cups. It's, well, it's not if you push it down. You see how that? It's, it's perfect if you push it down. It's four cups. Uh, that's how I measure my four cups. It's like brown sugar. When you uh, measure brown sugar, you pack it down. Well, I pack my bread down for this recipe. But if you don't and you don't want to, it's going to be just a little moister in uh, bread pudding, which is fine too. So either way, it's going to work for you. I just like it this way. So that since I like mine, uh, I'm teaching you how I like it. Here we go. So, Linda, you can throw that in there. And all, all we're going to do is put the bread in and then we're going to put the raisins in on top. It's really packed. So. It's really <laughs> packed. That's right. And here's the fun thing about this recipe is that you can um, change it up. Um, uh, someone came in this morning and she goes, oh, I wish you wouldn't put raisins in that. And I was thinking, well, I told her, I said, well, if, when you make this, don't put raisins in it. I happen to love raisins and I love raisin bread pudding. But you could put dried apricots or dates or you could apples. put cherries it's or endless. apples. The ideas are insults. I even like sometimes to put pecans in there or nuts, you know, so it can be, you know, make it your You your know what own. I like to put in it? What? Pumpkin. A pumpkin is good Canned too. Pumpkin. Candid pumpkin. Candid pumpkin. You have to cut back on your amounts if you do it in this recipe because it'd be a the pumpkin gives it a little bit too much um, liquid. But if you um, wanted that, you just cut down on the amount. You wouldn't use all of your mixture here, is all. But I, I, anything dried in there would fit fine. Any of your dried fruits, any or fresh apples, fresh mm -hmm. cherries. Um, you it's know, endless. Yeah. So, all right. So Linda, throw that in there, and while she's doing the that, raisins. There we go. Yes. Would you just and now she's going to just add all of this blended up mixture that she's going to pour over there. This is a nice recipe. It's quick and, and easy. And it's quick and it's easy. Now, can you make this the day before? Yes. It's, in fact, I love making it the day before. You could even make it the day before and bake it the next day. Or you can make it the day before, bake it the day before. So either way is fine. And you see how nice and juicy. And I packed that down and look how nice and juicy that is. Can you see? Right, look, if I put this aside, you can see how much juice is still in there. So it's, uh, it's nice. Uh, um, it would be a, a little, lot moisture if you didn't pack your bread down. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in the pan. Let's scrape it out for you. And there you go. Bake it at 350 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on... Um, uh, your oven and when it's done and when it's hot out of the oven just make a little glaze if you want and just sprinkle the glaze on of any type of frosting you want vanilla frosting uh, you, if you say I don't like making vanilla frosting and you want want it and you want to just use the one out of the can in the store that's fine too it's not gonna hurt a thing and then um, serve it hot or cold it's good either way and here it is mmm looks and, delicious and I just um, that'd be one I'm almost tempted to take a bite of right now, see, but I just said tempted. Not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the one that tastes things on the program, but one thing I, another thing I'm tempted to taste is Linda's 
granola. I love your granola, sis. All right, for that, you will need two cups of quick oats, a fourth a cup of pecan pieces, one fourth cup of coconut, a half a cup of pure maple syrup, one tablespoon of vanilla, a fourth a cup of canola oil, two tablespoons of hot water. This recipe I named Grammy's Granola because that's what my grandkids call me is Grammy. Oh. <laughs> I love that name. I, you know, I, I just think it's so precious. And, and you know what? You're a beautiful Grammy. Yes, you are. <laughs> Even though you both are so old and you're grandmas, and <laughs> I'm not because I'm so young. <laughs> No, I, I'll agree. <laughs> I'm not going to argue okay, that. I'm but so proud to be gonna... a grandma. I, it, it's fine with me. You can call me grandma anytime. My grandkids call me grandma um, because they have grandmas that are ninis and nanas and nanas. And I said, you know what? I want my grandkids to have a grandma. So they call me grandma, and I'm great with that. <laughs> You know what? Someday when I get to be a grandma, I'll be I'll be proud to be called grandma too. So, and, and what really touched my heart was I recently visited my grandkids in Texas and when I left, my grandson Michael said, "Grandma, you're really not going to go yet. It's just not been long enough." <laughs> and of course, I love that. And it's amazing too because um you know, you get to a certain place in your life and you just realize what's really, really important. Yes. And the time that you take to spend with your grandkids, your kids, your family is so precious. Yes. And it'll never be wasted time. It'll always be, just be treasured moments. And when I'm with my grandkids, like if I'm with Janie, we played in, we went to Cinda's, all of us were there, and we played in her, Katie's Playhouse for a long time, most <laughs> afternoon, cooking imaginary food and, you know, making imaginary dishes and, and feeding dolls and, I mean, all the things that are just important to little ones. You, you used know? to play in that playhouse with Katie doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, her husband built the playhouse. <laughs> well, I've, I spend most of my time doing Legos. <laughs> so, you know, they like the Legos. But I have a granddaughter now, Megan. So, I, you know, I can do some of the girly things, too. So, you know, I'm hey, in that doll. I'm, I spent my life playing Legos and trucks and cars, you know, with my son. So I, I get yeah. on that route, too. So <laughs> I understand that. Uh, you're, I'm not as comfortable in the dirt, though. <laughs> but, you know, there is one thing that is very special when you think of family. And that is, we always need to play with our kids yes, before yes. we pray with them. Because when you play with them, you build a bond and a friendship. And then they're very open to being prayed with because exactly. it gives them a, a, a better picture of who God is, really. Yep, and he cares about us individually. That's right. So I, I think that's an important thing. We're going to make our granola. And this is quick oats. I, I haven't... Um, used uh, the whole oats. I mean, I have in the past, but this turns out best. And this is some coconut. And you can use the unsweetened coconut. Oh, look at And She's here is some pecan. pecan. I told you I love her granola. And I usually, uh, in this one, I think I left the salt out because um, my husband does a lot better without um, salt. So I, think I we left should the throw salt some out. In. No, we're just leaving it out. <laughs> It, you'll I'm see. A little salt you, here. You'll I'm see. It. It'll see it, uh, what it, what it looks like. Now, sis, I want you to put um, the ma pure maple syrup in. Okay, and we're gonna put our vanilla. And I really don't know why I said hot water because I usually use just cold water or lukewarm or anything <laughs> out of the tap. So I'm not sure why that is. So just put You might have had it at the time, you know. I just... might, yeah, that might have been what I had at the time. I don't know. So just stir it up. And now just um, before you pour it in, I'm going to get my gloves on. Dandy dandy gloves. I'm telling you, this folks, recipe, those are great to have in your kitchen. A big box of them. If you don't have them, wash your hands in small, good. medium, large, whatever fits your, your hands. Right. Okay, I love them. Okay, now just slowly pour it in. Well, it might not have been too slow, but <laughs> that's well, okay. Well, slow is a relative term. <laughs> get the rest out of here. And you just, you take it and you work it all up like this so that it's all soaked in. And you'll see why I'm using the gloves in a minute. 
And you're forming. I think I already see why <laughs> you use the gloves. You're forming hunks. Little clumps of. Yeah, like little clumps. Mm -hmm. And do you spray your pan? No. No spray. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not no, gonna because spray it. there's oil in here. All right. So you just keep working it until you have a lot of different clumps in it, like that. And then you're gonna. What I what I like to do with this, and what really works the best, is the either early in the morning, or the night before, you put it in a low oven like 170 degrees or something like that, and leave it all night. And when you wake up in the morning, you have a nice smell in your kitchen, oh, which wonderful. invites everybody to eat. And the granola is done. And actually, that's the way I made this one, um, uh, sis. If you wanna. Show them what it looks, like, what it looks like. Yeah, that's the clumps. Uh, <laughs> I guess she's showing you. Uh, but maybe we'll have to. Can we just put a couple down here and show them what it, how the clumps are looking? She told me this, to I'll, show. I'll put this I'm here. Showing. Okay, now you're. This she's, is, show, she's showing you how to eat the clumps. <laughs> and now see, I'm 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 putting the clumps here. Mmm. And then usually I do a whole tray, but the, I mean I have a smaller tray if I'm going to do a little bit. But I, I oftentimes will, um, you know, double or triple the recipe. Mm -hmm. And because it freezes so well, I, it does. It freezes very nicely, and that's basically all you have to do. And you have granola. I make this for when I go away and go on trips or something, and my husband can't go with this me. This is great and for he, a snack. Carry on. Yes. You know? It is good for a snack. You it can, really is. It's a good for a snack. I love all it. right. What's our next? Well, recipe? let's show them the finished one you've got all piled up there. See, okay. and that's what we're going to snack on as soon as this program's over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe I should see if that's the same as this. And one, <laughs> and one thing that you can do also is add um, when it's all baked. And you're serving it, then add any kind of dried fruit you want, or I serve it with a lot of fresh fruit, either mm -hmm. um, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. So I'll put have like a, a cereal bar. I'll put my granola there, and then I'll have all the different toppings that you can put in it, and then your soy milk. And I might have some whole wheat toast with it. Mm. And um, they, my family loves it because they've got all their fruits there. The colors, I make sure there's a lot of color because we want to color, color our plate, plate like, like a, a rainbow. rainbow. So I do have the blues, some mango, and um, some strawberries, raspberries, different things like that. <laughs> and it makes an awesome um, breakfast. Something else that makes an awesome breakfast? I think breakfast she's going to have to make a double batch of this. Cinda's <laughs> Sunrise Burritos. Sis, you want to read the recipe? All right, I'll stop eating. <laughs> okay, for this you will need two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, one cup of onion diced, one cup of fresh mushrooms coarsely chopped, three medium potatoes cooked and diced, two cups of fresh spinach chopped, two tablespoons of McKay's chicken style seasoning, one teaspoon of veggie cell or all-purpose all seasoning, two 12.3 ounce packages of more new tofu, firm or extra firm, and eight flour tortillas. This is one of my favorites for breakfast. And actually, you could make these up the, the day before and wrap them up and then mm -hmm. just in foil and pop them in the oven or um, take the foil off and put it in the microwave. So you could make these up ahead of time, too. So it makes it easy. And that, that way, you can just grab it and eat it in the car if you have to eat it on the run. That's or you true. Could, could you make the first step first and then... The next morning, just let them then wrap it in the tortillas too. You oh, could, that's yeah. a good idea too. Yeah, either way. Could you turn the? Linda, you're the just heat on? good ideas. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Put um, your extra virgin olive oil in, or you could use canola oil if you want, and then put your onions in, and um, you want to get your onions browned. So you can crank that up and put it on high. And do they need brown or they just need to be clear? Clear. Okay. Um, unless you like raw onions, <laughs> which we all know we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean they're not good, just means we don't like them. <laughs> I, love to, I love to make um, up a Can lot of these. 
Yes, please. You can also use water pack tofu, and um, if if they have it, I know there are some places that you can't get the water pack tofu, and you can only get the more new. The more new tofu you'll find on your shelf, whereas the water pack tofu you'll find in usually in the in the produce section. They in have the a little cold section. in the cold. Yeah, they have a little section where they'll have um, uh, the soy uh, products, and I I I. Actually, prefer the water packed, but I put um, the t more new because obviously there's a lot of people that can't get it. So the water pack, but it, I think it's getting more common now. So I think it's a lot easier to find. You Don't you? Uh -huh. Just grab your paper. Okay, I'm going to add um, their. I like to use the baby portobello mushrooms. I like their their flavor and their hearty. Uh, Texture mm -hmm. and so add your mushrooms to that and let that cook. And yeah. actually, I'm going to get thank you. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm going to get um, my gloves on because tofu doesn't have um, a, strong a, a strong flavor, so it will take on the flavor of anything you cook it with. So if you don't have gloves, you can you can just. Um, just dump your tofu in here and you can mash it up with your spatula. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to do crumble it with it crumble it up with my hands. Just like this. And um, this is a great way to start your day because it will fill your day with lots of protein and um, you'll have lots of energy to help you through that morning until lunch. And of course, I have to add potatoes because everything's better with potatoes. <laughs> everything's better with potatoes. <laughs> if you don't want to add the potatoes, you don't have to. You could just um, leave it out. And I'm going to put a little bit of my, I love the veggie cell all-purpose vegetable seasoning, but you can use your favorite all-purpose vegetable seasoning. And I love the McKay's chicken style oh, that's flavoring. that's my favorite. Mm -hmm. That's the one we grew up with, you know. So Mom used that all the time. But, you know, I have a lot of friends who come over to the house, and I'll use that, and they've never used it before, and they go, I love the flavor of that. I like that better than my regular chicken flavoring. Mm -hmm. And they want to know where I got it. And I was like, oh, so I help them on where to get it. And then we'll add the potatoes. And again, you don't have to add the potatoes if you don't want to, but oh, it oh, just you'll makes want it, to. you'll <laughs> want to, it just makes it so much better. You could probably even add some zucchini slices or something like that if you wanted to, too. Actually, at this, at this stage, you could do all some bacon kinds chips. of things in here. Yeah. I mean, just be, you could be creative. I did just a basic, and uh, it's easy with ingredients that I always have on hand. And so it, I can do something quick, just like that. And a lot of times on um, Sabbath morning, when everybody's g rushing, you know, to get ready and get out the door, I will make up a bunch of these and wrap them in foil and keep them in the oven. And that way, when they're rushing out the door to get in the car, they can grab one and eat it on their way. So that's mm -hmm. a good it works idea. Really good. It mm -hmm. does. We, uh, I, my husband loves potatoes, of course, and we live um, by some potato fields. Yes, no, thank, you for, our yes. Potatoes, yes. thank yes. you for our potatoes. Thank you for our potatoes. She brought us these huge, what are they, 50 pounds of eggs and potatoes? They go to the, the field whole and they glean yeah, from the field. People let you go there and, and glean potatoes and you, you know, it's just awesome because um, you can get all kinds of, we get so many of them, we can give them away to different people and they're always appreciated and we have enough so that lasts us all winter. So it's 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 really they even cool. Bible oh, times they oh, gleaned. Yes, in Bible times they gleaned. <laughs> I'm thinking about Ruth okay, and Boaz. Okay, so instead yep. instead of cutting because um, I didn't have a um, sometimes I'll just pour it in, put the spinach in whole. Sometimes I'll cut it up. Sometimes sis, you want to tear some up in here? Sometimes I just tear it up and um, add your spinach. Look at that nutritious. And amazing how it just cooks right down. Oh, yeah, because you don't have to cook your spinach. I mean, you just, it wilts and it's ready. There you go. I don't know if I'm keeping up with you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
And then I love to use the whole wheat um, high fiber tortillas. If I have time, um, I'll make a whole wheat tortilla. In fact, there's um, a recipe in our cookbook. There's a recipe in our cookbook mm -hmm. for um, homemade tortillas. And um, if I have time, like I said, I will make them ahead of time. But what you'll do is, um, that's almost ready, but if you just put a little bit in and I'll show them how to wrap this. Is that enough? Yeah. I like it like that even to it that yep. you don't have to have the spinach cooked all the way. Right, exactly. And you roll it like this, tuck in your sides. Oh, you don't want to miss piece. that. Yeah, Tuck go. in your sides and roll again. And in there way, you can just pick it up and go. <laughs> and there she is. Mm, I think I'll go. Bye. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Come back here. <laughs> You're not going to get away with that. It's that easy. <laughs> well, we need her. Let's well, show you what one she's already prepared for you. Look right here. And then she's served up. The, isn't that clever? To, um, uh, putting it in a hollowed out avocado the there salsa? with a little salsa in there, yeah. made a little salsa cup. Nice. And, and uh, isn't that nice with just Actually, a little... Actually, I'm not going anywhere because I know that next recipe is your apricot bread. <laughs> and I love it, so I think I'll stay around. All right, let me read the recipe for you. For this, you will need one cup of boiling water, one and a fourth cups of dried apricots, two cups of white whole wheat flour, two thirds cup of sugar, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one tablespoon of cornstarch, one teaspoon of salt, one fourth teaspoon of baking soda, one cup of apricot nectar, two tablespoons of margarine, and one fourth cup of pecans. And for the glaze, you will need two tablespoons of brown sugar, one tablespoon of margarine, one and a half teaspoons of apricot nectar, and two tablespoons of pecans. So this is a really nice moist um, bread that I, I I love because basically it's got two of my very favorite I was ingredients. Say, I know why she likes it. <laughs> I love pecans and I love apricots. <laughs> I, I do. In fact, Cindy and I have many apricot stories that we won't <laughs> share in the air. <laughs> we love them. <laughs> we use them on our. It takes us um, six hours to drive here. And a lot of times um, we'll ride together if we're if one of the others not um, you know has to tape uh, our children's programs the next week. And to keep awake, we'll sit there and just eat the apricot. Yeah. Oh, just. Um. Now, did you need an excuse to eat and try my apricot? <laughs> Actually, I don't think she ever needs an excuse. I was going to say, I don't think I ever need an excuse. <laughs> well, um, one of the things I wanted to, to tell you what we do when you start this recipe is first you're going to chop up your apricots, take your boiling water, put over them and let them set and um, steam and then, uh, then before you're ready to assemble everything, drain them. So these have already been steam, you know, in the boiling water and drained and ready to use. So the first right. thing that we're going to do is you're going to Sis, just dump all of those dry ingredients in here. While she is doing that, we've got some apricot nectar here, and we also have some of the margarine that is melted. And she's, Linda, you're just going to incorporate the margarine into that apricot nectar. Now, when we were making this recipe, my um, uh, assistant, Melissa Hoffman, she was helping with the ingredients. She couldn't find apricot nectar anywhere. And so if that is, um, uh, you know, the case in your grocery store and you have trouble finding apricot nectar, then what you can do is get a, a fruit, um, just a natural, um, you know, uh, jam or jelly of apricot jelly that is naturally sweetened, that is not, um, it's either fruit sweetened or naturally sweetened. And then what you do is you put, and you add enough water to that to put it in a cup, uh, measuring cup, and then add just enough water to bring the level up to a one cup, of, so you're getting one cup of moisture. And that way, if you can't find the apricot nectar, that will do the same trick, okay? Now that's good But to the know. big thing is don't just, um, uh, just, don't just, just use a cup of apricot because, um, uh, by itself, because it'll be too sweet in my opinion. So. What that is she would doing be over pretty there? sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I absolutely, actually do love sweet things. So, Linda, now it's your turn. Uh, oh, wait a minute. It's not her turn. 
Um, can you add your um, apricots? Really? Uh huh. Yep. Got to no? add those. Yep. She's got to put those things in, and and right there. Thank you. And I'm just going to in, um, mix them and just so all of so them are coated. coated yep. The so flour. they get coated with the flour. Now you can add that in the middle or all over. Let me give you the fork back. And um, actually, Cindy, will you add this? And Linda, will you spray that pan for me? How's sure. that? Okay, and, and then, out. yeah, that's a good idea. Here we go. There you go. Okay, and I'm just going to get all the moisture out and mix that up. And I can already tell you I'm going to love this because those apricots were so good. <laughs> I do love apricots. You know, we were talking earlier about our grandchildren. I have to share another grand story, uh, grandchildren story. A grand story, story about a your grand grandchildren. A grand story about my grandchildren. <laughs> so it's going to be good. Because this just happened. I was so excited, you know, because my Linda was um, talking about um, prayer and, and how it, it's important to play with your children That's and right. then pray with them. And Michael, you know, he's my oldest grandson, and he is my prayer warrior. He is a prayer buddy, and, and he called me up. He was getting ready to take a, a test, and he's like, Grandma, would you play, pray for me? <laughs> and so, you know, we prayed about the test, and then um, this week he called me, and he was so excited. Grandma, Grandma, prayer works! And I said, <laughs> and I said yes, it does, Michael. And he goes, I got my report card, and I got all. <laughs> Good job, Michael. <laughs> I was very, very proud of him. Oh. He goes to um, a church school in Texas. and uh, You know, I picture um, Jesus when, you know, kids are so happy and they realize that really all good things come from God. That's anything right. good that happens to us or anything good that we do is always from Him. And we can know where all the bad things come from because they don't come from God. That's you know exactly that. right. And so God is just so excited when a little kid is excited about an answer to prayer, you know, because <laughs> it's like, yes, I gave you that. You recognized it, <laughs> that I gave it to you. And God wants us to recognize that he gives us good things. So That's right. That is a, that and is awesome. And I've been praying with Michael for a long time yes, because he has. He, to take them, he's older now, so he's, you know, um, you know, almost 12 years old, and so he understands more fully. But when he was really little, he didn't have quite the understanding that he does now. Mm -hmm. And so he'd stop in the middle of a store and say, Grandma, we got to pray quick. And I go, What, what? And then we'd be in the middle of a toy store, and he goes, Because that toy over there is the last one. We need it quick. <laughs> it's like, He said, We need to pray and ask Jesus for it. And I was like, Honey, um, that's not exactly what prayer is all about. Yeah. And that gave us, though, chances to explain to Michael what prayer was all about. I was going to say, it's really important to teach our children that we pray about the little things, mm -hmm. but um, we also need to teach them what we mean by the little things. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and well, also, um, it's good for kids to know that um, God is not this big Santa Claus that wants to just everything you want. He's going to make you more and more selfish. That's right. God's purpose is to take the self out of us. So if he sees that it is not good for us, he's going to say no because That's right. he has our eternal good at, you know, in mind. So when we teach our children, God may say no because he may he's going to do what's best for you. This may not be the best thing. You that, know? That's right. And that's for adults as well. Yeah. Yes. You know, I also wanted to teach my children that, um, you know, we talk to God and Jesus all through the day. And so while we pray about the little things, it's also good to thank Jesus throughout the day. So we had this um, special thing that we did every fall. And whoever saw the prettiest tree with the brightest, most gorgeous colors, we would yell out, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, and, and That's it would- That's a good idea. So we'd be, I love that we'd idea. Be driving, <laughs> we'd be driving along and there'd be a gorgeous tree with all beautiful, with the fall colors, uh -huh. and David and Katie would be like, thank you, Jesus, mm -hmm. and and Katie go, no, Bubba, that's my tree. Mm -hmm. I thank Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now, all I have to do is pour this. You can see what a nice consistency this is, and we're just going to pour that right in here, and you can see the, the type of uh, loaf pan it is, and if um, you have a smaller one, it's okay. It, it will just rise a little higher, and... Put that and just level it out. 
Bake it for about one hour. Check it with the toothpick. You want it mm -hmm. until the toothpick comes mm -hmm. out clean. So it's about an hour depending on your oven. So check it about 10 minutes beforehand just to be sure. And it might, if it goes five minutes over, that's okay too. You want it till the toothpick comes out clean. Do you need a piece of foil to on and, it if it and gets, starts yes, getting too dark? Yes, cover it with a piece of foil. But if, if the top looks like it's getting a little brown and yet the toothpick isn't clean yet, cover it with just a little bit of foil so it can uh, continue cooking and not get too dark on the top. And I have one right here all prepared for you. That's beautiful. And uh, also, would you take a look at those uh, You've got garnish? A glaze on top. I've got a nice glaze on top. And look at those nice garnish over there. If you could get a shot of that for us um, the, with apricot roses. That's what I garnished that with. And for the glaze, I didn't mix it up right now because I can't, you can't put the glaze on until after it's baked. And so we didn't need it. So the glaze mm -hmm. recipe is there. All you're going to do is heat that glaze up on the stove. And uh, after it comes out of the oven, you're just going to pour it over and sprinkle on the pecans. Mm. And that is it. Mm. And what you're going to get really excited for next is Linda's homemade biscuits and gravy. Mm. Okay, for that, you will need one cup of unbleached white flour, one cup of white whole wheat flour, one tablespoon of aluminum free baking powder, a half a teaspoon of sea salt, one fourth cup of non hydrogenated soy margarine, three fourths cup of silk light or other soy milk. And for the country gravy, you will need one cup of potatoes diced, two cups of unsweetened soy or almond milk a half a teaspoon of sea salt, a half a teaspoon of seasoned salt, a fourth a cup of tofuti better than sour cream, and a half a cup of vegan sausage-like crumbles. You will also need for the slurry a fourth a cup of unsweetened soy or almond milk, a fourth a cup of cornstarch. Okay, we are ready to make biscuits. <laughs> I love and, biscuits. And it, that was a lot of ingredients because it's basically two recipes here. That's so right. if you cannot write that fast, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Sit back and relax. All you mm -hmm. need is a notepad to write down the tips, okay? Because all the recipes are found on the 3ABN website, mm -hmm. www.3abn.org. You can also find them on our Mitchiff Sisters website. Just go to mitchiffsisters.com. M-I-C-H-E-F-F -F, sisters.com and you can get all your recipes there. So sis, what are you going to do first? Well, I'm going to put my um, white whole wheat flour in my bowl. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to put the unbleached white flour in there. Right. And now um, I'm going to put the <coughs> aluminum free baking powder and okay. a little bit of salt. All right. And I'm going to stir this all up. So that it's pretty well blended all over. Well, I have to make a confession. I know this won't surprise anybody, but <laughs> I, I was back there sneaking biscuits in the prep kitchen. <laughs> I was really too. Good. I got to apologize as well. <laughs> <laughs> they are the flakiest biscuits. Those oh, are I so good. Resist. They and came I out of the biscuits. oven. Oh, they oh, smell so God. good. And they rise up so high and nice. There's tell you what. Okay. It's and um, one thing, um, I'm am gonna I'm gonna put. Uh, do you, we don't have anything like yeah. a spatula. There we go. This is just uh, the soy margarine. And I have made these um, with you know oil and stuff too, but it just seems to work good. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting all of this into the flour. Okay. And do you like a pastry blender to cut it like that or? Mm hmm I do. But I'm gonna I'm just mostly getting it broke up. Okay. Okay. All right. I use either at home, mm -hmm. but this will go faster. Yeah, I love the pastry blender. Now what type of uh, soy margarine do you, do you like it when you're cooking at home? Because a lot of times people will ask us, we want to know what you use. You know, and we don't, we're not promoting use, any certain uh, company. I but. use um, a lot of times uh, Smart Balance or Earth Balance or something, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. So the kind that comes in a tub? But, yeah, but we don't even use it very much at all at home, just for a little, sometimes in a recipe like this, but. That's um, what, but, but for this, yes, that's what you would use yes, is what I'm saying. Yes, that's what I would use. Okay. And I use the light because um, a lot of the other smart balances, they have um, fish oil in them. So if you don't want that, make sure that you get the, mm -hmm. I think it's the light, but check on the, always check the ingredients and mm -hmm. you'll know which one. 
Yeah, so the, I've noticed sometimes too that you have to recheck the ingredients sometimes because things that I thought were fine, all yes. of a sudden I've gone back, wait a minute, what'd they do? They added something that I didn't want. So uh, I, I, I would have that. to change. You're right. So I it's not just, too. you know, read them once and you're okay. You have to kind of keep keep up on okay, it. Okay, if I could have that. All right, you can have it, sis. Okay, and now I'm going to. Now, one thing about when you add your liquid, flowers are different. All different oh, kinds boy, of flowers. They if they have sat a while or whatever, I mean, it's going to work differently. So I put three fourths of a cup, but you may not need that much, or you may need more, depending on your flower. So you add a little. So at a time. you add a little at a time. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of work it around like this. You're going along the side of the bowl, I see. Mm -hmm. And I put some in the middle. And I'm going to, there's a little, there is a little bit more in there. And I can see that I need it, so I'm going to put it in. And if you say, You're playing well, it safe. I am playing it safe. That's a good safe. way to do it. Yes. Okay. Mm. There we go. And I don't use a rolling pin to roll up my biscuits, do you? I, no. I just pat them out. I, I don't either. Okay. I don't either. Well, all that makes I wonder, three of us. I wonder if it's wonder, a sister thing. Yeah, or, <laughs> or we might have all had the same mom. That might be a okay. good point. I am going to sprinkle a little bit of um, flour. flour down there. I'm going to put this dough right here. Do you want me to do anything over here while you're doing that? Yes, while you're doing that, um, I'm going to let, I'll let this rest just a minute to tell you what you need to do here, put the soy milk in there. Okay. And you're going to just bring it, bring it to uh, simmer. Simmer. Okay. That's where it's really hot. And then you can make the slurry, pouring some of the soy milk into the cornstarch okay. and make a slurry. And all when right. it's hot, all you're going to do is thicken that. Now right. I said you put potatoes in there, but you're gonna and you cook. You could have, you have your potatoes pre-cooked. So you have them already cooked, and so you're adding um, potatoes that have been cooked when it comes time, because this is a little bit different kind of gravy. I've got potatoes and sausage in it, and uh, it was one it's that my delicious. husband really likes. So I had to, hope you like it, I too. I thought it was really creative of her. I have actually, I admit, I've never done this before. Usually I have, you know, I'll have the vegetarian sausage on the side, and I'll have, you know, but this is really cool how she put and the potatoes on the side, but she put it all together, and it's, you know, you serve it over your biscuits, and I right. love it. So it's, it's a, a nice one-dish meal. So it what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my biscuit like that, and then I'm going to turn it like that so that it will be flaky. The Brenda mm -hmm. taught me this. Yes, it's, and, it makes um, a difference in your bit flaky yes, to your biscuit. It does. You fold and fl fold over mm -hmm. and fold over. And, and this fold over. needs just a little bit more flour, just uh, just for that purpose. I mean, it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm going to pat it down, and the, I make these a little bit thicker. So if you want thinner biscuits, then you go for it. But I did not have a biscuit cutter, so I'm going to show you what I used. <laughs> I have a glass. Hey, you we know what? She's creative. At my house, you just do whatever. You dip it in the flour like that, and then you're going to come down and you do it really quick, Woo. down like that. And you have the pan. If you could spray the pan there, and I'll how, just show you how. How quick did you pat that dough out? Um, it is probably a about couple inch. inches. No, it's about an inch and a half. It inch and like. a half at least. And then I'll do that again and real quick. And I put my biscuits together because they'll rise higher if you do that. So um, I put them together like that. So you want them touching. And so again, you're going to put them like that and they're going to be touching. I put them right together and I pat that out. Another little one, I'm going to put it right together so they're all touching. And then okay. the one that's that little bit that's left, you just take that and pat it out again. And it doesn't matter how they, you know, if they're a little funny mm -hmm. on top, don't worry about it. That, that's They'll a biscuit. They'll still taste good. And then the last one I've got here, I just kind of shape it into a little a biscuit thing like that and I put that right there and there you have it. And I'm yes. going to mm -hmm. add this to And the Brenda's mm. adding the hot stuff now. Yes. And now what do you want? Do you, you, is all this okay. going to go? That as soon as it thickens. Okay. That, and you can have that on, is that on? It's that's as high as it will go. go so. so all you do is just throw all this in here as it yeah. thickens. You put your seasoning in. 
And actually, mm -hmm. you can even put that in with your milk, but you get your seasoning in there. Mm -hmm. Can I put this in here, too? That we'll put in last because it'll turn it brown. Oh, okay. So as soon as that's thick, you can add your potatoes in there. That's okay. fine. And well, that should, that'll thicken up. And potatoes. <laughs> okay. And then you have to keep stirring the well, whole time. Well, I'm going to do with the fork now since the potatoes yeah. are in there. Okay. Okay. And since we don't have time to wait till it all um, right, thickens I'll just and stuff, I'll let can me we show them what they right. And okay. let me let me show just tell you what you do because this has got to thicken. And when that thickens, you add the tofu um, sour cream to it. You'll put that in there and stir that all around. The very last thing you want to do is add your so, uh, uh, vegan so, uh, sausage, sausage crumbles, crumbles because otherwise it'll turn your gravy uh, really brown. And, and if you like brown gravy, go that, ahead. That's fine. But here's some that we have for you right here to see. Take a look finished. at those flaky biscuits. No, Don't those look good? Doesn't that just make you want to get up in the morning and, and <laughs> rise and shine? And breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the gravy with the potatoes and the sausage in it and a little sausage sprinkled on top. Well, well, our next recipe is my apple cinnamon baked oatmeal. Let me read that recipe for you. You will need one tablespoon of flaxseed ground, two tablespoons of warm water, two cups of quick oatmeal, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pure vanilla, one half cup of pure maple syrup, one and a half cups of almond milk or soy milk, one half cup of unsweetened natural applesauce, one cup of fresh apple peeled and diced, and one teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, my husband loves oatmeal. In fact, as my sisters know, he, he makes great oatmeal makes himself. Awesome oatmeal. Yes. So Thank you, Joel. He, he's I, so creative about it, too. He's always adding something different. His oatmeal's never the same. Now, it is the, always no. delicious. And I can't compete with his oatmeal. <laughs> but this, so I didn't even try. In fact, in, our, in one of our cookbooks, I have a recipe for Joel's oatmeal. That's right. <laughs> and, and named it so. <laughs> and named it so. And, um, but this is different than your oatmeal, honey. This is baked oatmeal, and you make it the day ahead of time, put it in the refrigerator, and let it sit, and then you can pop it in the oven in the morning. So, oh, that is yeah. awesome. So, sis, I, the ground, this is ground flaxseed. Put this in our warm water and mix it up and let that sit for a minute. Okay. And, sis, if you will add... All, add all your dry ingredients first. Okay. And then um, while you're doing that, I'm going to cut some apple slices. I um, I love apple and I love the flavor that it gives. Do you and mean, are you peel them? Here, sis, you can take the paring knife and go like this. Uh, you don't have to peel it if you don't want. I like that good peeling, but you can peel it if you want. And then I'm just going to cut it in slices and um, and then just coarsely chop it up. You want that half, too? Yes, ma'am. All right. Yeah. And you can You did peel such a good job at the other one, see? That That's she's, right. So, she's wow. trusting you with that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I love apples. Put your apples in. I do too. I do try to eat an apple a day. You know, I just think it's good for you. And those peelings are so good for you. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you don't like the peeling, you can take it out. If, um, but you don't have to. Yeah, when we were kids, mom would always give them to us, and she'd say, "You need to eat an apple a day to keep that doctor away." <laughs> of course, we didn't have any funds to go to a doctor, so <laughs> Cindy can't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, she's married to one, so <laughs> she doesn't want to keep her doctor away. <laughs> oh, but apples are so good for you, so. And I love them. And there's so many different varieties and types. I, I like the ones that are a little bit tart. And the, a little bit sweet, but a little bit tart. Maybe crisp. And crisp. They have to Very be Very crisp. crisp. Yeah. Yep. I, I, a good apple has to be nice and crisp and juicy. Yep. I love that. That's the way I like them, too. Mm hmm I don't like those mushy ones. Mm -mm. I used to live out um, in a suburb of Boston called Bolton, and they have five apple orchards in that town. And I made applesauce every single year, and I loved um, the different varieties. 
It was really good. Okay. All right. Now, if you'll mix the applesauce in there, sis. Okay. And just some of our home cooked applesauce, huh? Oh, so. Brenda and I love to uh, make applesauce together. We, we love gotta to join make, us for that. Yeah, one, we that need to have Linda come and, um, sis, if you want to put that in here, and we're gonna stir this together. And um, the flaxseed just adds um, some extra nutrition yeah. that you can get away with because there's no good flavor. Fiber too. It's good fiber. There's no flavor. Okay, and all okay. we're gonna do is pour this in like this. Okay, I'll let you finish mixing. And if you'll spray my container I'll for me. And it then smells so good. Doesn't it? There you go. So you leave that, you make that night before and just leave it sit. Mm -hmm. Now you'll pour it into right into there. And you can cover, now you just cover this up and then set it in, in your the, fridge. Right, set it in your fridge, and in the morning you will um, bake it at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes. That's it, piping hot. Isn't that Isn't great? Isn't that awesome? It is. Rise and well, shine. And, and there's some already baked for you. And you have an apple rose. I love that with apple peeling. Well, my sisters and I have five cookbooks out now, right? Our newest one is called mm -hmm. Family Favorites. And uh, right now, we'd like to show you how you can get one for you, or all of them. That's right. If you've enjoyed the recipes today and would like to purchase your own copy of one of their cookbooks, including their new cookbook, Family Favorites, you can write to 380N, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. That's 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896. Or you can call 618-627-4651. That's 618-627-4651. If you'd like to contact the Mitchiff Sisters for speaking appointments or concerts, you can do so at their website at MitchiffSisters.com. That's M-I-C-H-E-F-F, Sisters.com. Hello, I'm Tom Mann. Have you ever wondered what it takes to keep 3ABN's message fresh and up-to-date? We're working constantly on new programs for an ever-growing audience around the world. But how is that accomplished? After working many years in television and radio, I've realized how unusual it is for 3ABN to produce such a large percentage of original quality programming. Most Christian networks use a large number of programs produced by other ministries, and unfortunately, they have little or no control over the content. But we've been called to give a consistent message, and we do not allow the focus to become entertainment or performance-oriented. The clear vision given to Danny Shelton, our founder, was to build a television station that would reach the world with the undiluted Three Angels messages, one that would counteract the counterfeits. And that's what we strive for. We just don't provide family-friendly programming. If it's not squarely based on the Bible, our pledge to you is that it will not appear on any of our networks. When it comes to original programming, we produce 69% of our 3ABN English television content, 67% of our 3ABN Latino content, and 100% of what our Russian language channel airs. Without the Lord and all of you, that would be impossible. But we're continuously blessed with the finest teachers, preachers, health presenters, and guests day after day and year after year. So many people work together to make a television program. Producers, directors, camera operators, studio managers, lighting and audiovisual directors and video engineers, just to mention a few. But we never forget that the message is the most important part of the equation and bringing the hope of salvation to those who haven't heard about Jesus Christ. We have only one solution a relationship with our Savior, and whether it's a story of a changed life or a program specifically for children, we want to bring honor and glory to Him each and every minute of every day. And with six networks airing 168 hours of programming each week, that's a total of 1,008 hours. How can we do this with such a small staff? The answer is simple, the Lord makes it possible, and He uses you to help. From the beginning, your prayers and financial support have made it all possible. And 25 years later, our message is still strong. So thank you for all you do for 3ABN. Your prayers are felt each day, both at our ministry headquarters and all around the world. 
If the Holy Spirit impresses you to support 3ABN's worldwide ministry, please send your tax-deductible love gifts to 3ABN, Post Office Box 220, West Frankfort, Illinois, 62896, or call us at 618-627-4651 during regular business hours. God bless you. Well, we hope we've encouraged you to rise, rise and shine, shine and have breakfast every morning. Start <laughs> your day in a healthy way. <laughs> oh, I love that. You slogan. will be happy. <laughs> That's right. Well, let's take a look at some of the recipes once again that are, uh, will tempt your taste buds. We're going to start off here with raisin bread pudding. Mm. And uh, good hot or cold. And then. Oh, this is delicious, the too. The Sunrise Burrito. That's right. That That's is packed with nutrition. Absolutely. And then we have our apricot nut bread, nice and moist. And uh, you can even eat those roses. Ooh. <laughs> yes, and we have biscuits and gravy. Ooh, so that sausage and potato gravy looks wonderful. And Grammy's granola. You could grab a bag of that and eat it on the go. <laughs> That's right. That's so good for you. And uh, I just love um, baked oatmeal. Baked oatmeal. I mean, I can't wait to try that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I sure love oatmeal, so that's really good. It's amazing what you can, if you just want to be a little creative yeah. in your kitchen, how happy you can make your family. And it really doesn't take all that much work. Some people think, oh, I can't do that. I don't have time. But you do have time. We all have the same amount of hours in the day, and it's how we use that time. And when you're uh, making priority, when you're making your family a priority, it's a message that says every single meal that you put out there in the table for your family, I love you. And God makes us a priority, so why That's shouldn't right. we share that with our family? That's exactly right. Exactly. So when next time you're tempted to skip breakfast, don't. Well, that's all the time we have today, so until next time, may all your meals be seasoned with God's love. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.